This is the second read-through. It is still June 20th, 2011. Uh, this is scene three in which Nate first meets George. So, beginning of the scene. Deep in the forest lies a small makeshift camp from the central Linto. Me too. <laughs> Continue. A big black man emerges from his slumber. It is apparent he is homeless. His clothes are worn and tattered, and his belongings are sparse and old. But from the look on the man's face, you would never have guessed he had fallen in hard times. A broad beaming smile welcomes the new day. He stretches, yawns, and goes about his morning routine. Washing up in the nearby creek, he takes his underwear and proceeds to wash it in the creek as well. He then makes a small meal of roasted squirrels, packs up his bags, and heads into town to start the day. Our big black homeless guy drops his bags on the sidewalk, pulls out his cardboard sign, and sits on the curb, flashing his sign. He still has a big beaming smile on his face. Presently, Nate comes sauntering down the sidewalk. He is smoking a cigarette and is deep in thought. He doesn't even see our homeless guy, whose name happens to be George. Suddenly, George breaks through his thoughts. Excuse me, mister, can you spare any change? Nate looks at him spectacly, then shakes his head. Sorry, man. Oh, it's okay. You have a blessed day, mister. Nate looks around and sighs. He looks back at George. Look, I, I don't have anything better to do today, so... He sits down next to George. Why don't you just tell me your life story? George stares at him, perplexed. I don't think you want me to do that. It's, a long, and it's long and boring. Don't want to waste any of your time. Please, I'll buy you lunch. How about that? Very well. The next scene is at the Waffle House. George and Nate are sitting at a table finishing lunch in George's story. And that's how I got there. Wow, George, that's unfortunate. Damn it, here. <laughs> George smiles and sips his coffee. That's Nate stares out the window. But I'm not unhappy. The Lord has been good to me. It's all about faith. Right, and that's why you're always smiling, right? Exactly. What about you, Nate? What's your story? It's stupid, really. I lost my job and my girl, but you know what? I don't even care. They weren't worth it. Oh, don't say that. Every person God puts in, in our life is there for a reason. Doubtful. All these people have been is just a waste of my time. Don't you think I felt the same way when my daddy left and my mom got hooked on drugs? All I could think of was why why did God put me in such a wretched, broken home? Nate stares out the window. But I have learned to appreciate everything I've, I've been given, including this lunch. Thank you, by the way. Not a problem. The waitress walks by, Nate motion, motions for her to bring him the check. So what you got going on on this afternoon? Absolutely nothing. Want to see where I live? Uh, okay. Nate and George walk deep into the forest until they come to George's makeshift camp. Nate looks about him in disdain in George's intuition. at George's intuition. The camp is a work of art. Everything has a specific place, and many objects appear handmade, made out of garbage and rookie. <laughs> but to Nate, it's still just trash. Welcome to Providence Palace, my friend. You live in this dump? This is not a dump. You can't survive in a dump. Providence has everything I need and more. Nate looks around, still skeptical. Right, so how long have you been in here, Providence? Just about 11 years. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, oh, no, that's good. I just said 11 years, he called it. No, that's how long it is. Just around 11 years. <laughs> I guess that's enough time to get settled in, huh? More than enough. Here, let me show you. He takes Nate to the creek. This is the creek. He takes Nate to the tent. <laughs> this is my tent, and that's my bed. Gotcha. He oh, takes Nate to a tree. Nate wrinkles and puts his hands to his neck. Oh, my. 
<laughs> oh yep. my word. Yep, this is my pooping trick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm trying not to. No, that's fine. It's a read through. Obviously, we're not shooting. So. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's lovely. Thanks for the tour. They move away from the tree. <laughs> so, uh, so what do you do for food, George? George goes to his tent, pulls out a squirrel's oh, tail. Oh no, mostly squirrels, an occasional possum maybe. One time, even ate a bear's leg when he was sleeping. <laughs> you just but, uh, made that up. Nope. <laughs> they stare at each other awkwardly. George finally lowers his eyes. And when I get enough change, sometimes I go and get a donut. Sweet. Well, it seems you got a great thing going on here. Yep. And now you're here. Thanks, thank Jesus. So, how, so, how are we gonna do this? Uh, do what? Well, you got a car or something. W wait a minute, I messed it up. Well, you got a car or something? I can start hauling up my bags. It's all about inflection. Wait, are you implying that? Of course, the tent will have to come down. No, 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 George, I, I never said you... No, no, George, George. Good thing I stocked up on squirrels. Don't know when I'll get the chance to eat another. Hope you get a comfy couch. No, George. Got a comfy couch, damn Sorry. it. George stops me. talking Sorry. abruptly and looks up startled. His smile slowly disappears. Look, I never said you could come home with me. I'm sorry, but that's not going to happen. Then why'd you come down here? Because you asked me to, you moron. <laughs> wow, you you are dumb. Good God, is that what you do? You just leech off of every person that comes by. Get a life. Hey, how about this? Get a damn job. George <laughs> looks disheartened for a moment, and then, but then his smile slowly returns. Chagrin? He slowly moves back to his tent. Sorry, Mr. Nate. I didn't mean to assume... You're right, I'm a nobody. Who was I to think you'd come by and pull me out from this providence? He laughs and sits down on his cot. You have a nice day now. I'll be here if you ever want to visit. He curls up in a ball on his makeshift bed. Nate sighs and look up, looks at the sky. He twists his mouth in a tight grimace. All right, fine. Get your stuff. George leaps up from his cot, his eyes ablaze of excitement. Oh, thank you, Mr. Nate. You are a blessing. You are a blessing, my friend. You won't regret this. I already do. And this is only for a week, okay? George isn't even listening. A whirlwind of activity. He dashes around, collecting all of his personal items. Finally, having collected everything, he runs up to Nate, who is still standing in the same spot, calculating everything that could go wrong with a hobo in his apartment. Where do I put this? And the last scene that I got right now is in Nate's apartment late afternoon. Nate opens the door to his apartment and shows George inside. George looks about him, mesmerized with all the things around. Nate flicks on the lights and points to an empty corner. You can toss your stuff over there. George does so. Nate points to the couch. You'll be sleeping there. I got an extra pillow in the closet. Nate heads to the kitchen, then turns around as he remembers something. Oh, and the refrigerator is not open season, okay? If you would like to something to eat, ask first. I just lost my job, so remember I'm on a tight budget here. What's a refrigerator? Nate. All right. Go ahead. Nate stares at him in disbelief. Are you serious? You don't know what a. You know what? No, never mind. <laughs> I, I'm sure you've forgotten what certain things are. It's fine. George looks around, nodding his head and frowning. Hey, where's your pooping tree? <laughs> uh, we actually have a bathroom for that. It's 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 uh, that door right over there, okay? Oh, nice. George enters into the bathroom. Insert 20 minutes later. When George emerges from the bathroom, he comes into the kitchen where Nate is still cooking. George comes up behind Nate and peers over his shoulder. Nate notices him and nudges him away. Do you mind? Are you making squirrel soup? No, George. People don't normally eat squirrels. Nate picks up an empty pot and hands it to George. I'm making pasta. Can you do me a favor? Fill this with water. No problem. George takes the pot and heads for the front door. Nate runs over and stops him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you going? Just fill it from the kitchen sink. Oh. Where were you going to fill it? I thought you had a creek in the back. Nate stares at him for a moment, then speechless, and turns back towards the kitchen. 
George stands frozen with the pot, wondering why the hell Nate was so puzzled. Nate... Okay. Oh, yeah. This then the others, I guess this wasn't the last scene. The last scene I have is actually at night. So, interior, dinner, table, night. Nate and George are sitting across from each other at the dinner table having dinner. George is clearly enjoying his meal far more than Nate is. His eyes rolled back. George lets out an exclamatory sigh of delight after every bite. Nate eyes him with disdain. George finally pauses after one mouthful. This is a really nice place, Nate. Really nice. And this food. Oh man, this is... this is amazing. Nate mumbles a forced thanks. It's a shame you're single. <sighs> Nate squir squirms in his seat and runs his hand through his hair. I wasn't until yesterday. Really? Wow, you must be lonely if you let me stay with you the next day, huh? Just, please, I, I don't want to talk about this. I'm sorry, was she pretty? Obviously, I don't date ugly girls, George. So why did she leave? George, we're, we're not talking <laughs> about this. You cheated on her, didn't you? Damn it, George! Look, I know you've been living in the bush your whole life. But when I say shut up, I mean shut up, okay? There are certain things that are none of your damn business. Nate storms off to his room, leaving George alone at the table. And that's the end of the scene. So, more to come, soon.